Hey everyone, this week let's talk about Navigate on Autopilot, how well it functions in certain scenarios, and what my experience with it has been like so far. To enable Navigate on Autopilot, go ahead and bring up Vehicle Controls, then tap on Autopilot, then tap Navigate on Autopilot Beta to enable it. That'll cause this dialog box right here to pop up, which basically outlines the current functionality of Navigate on Autopilot as well as its limitations and your responsibilities. If you agree, go ahead and hit yes. From here, you can go ahead and customize Navigate on Autopilot uh, by poking Customize Navigate on Autopilot. And here you're presented with four speed-based lane change options. Disabled, Mild, Average, and Mad Max mode. It's important to keep in mind that these options don't affect how your car changes lanes, but it does affect how frequently your car suggests changing lanes based on the speed of the vehicle in front of you. So if you have it set to Mad Max mode, if the vehicle in front of you is only traveling a couple miles an hour below your target speed, it'll suggest a lane change. If you have it set to one of the more mild settings, then the car in front of you has to be traveling significantly below your set speed before it starts suggesting lane changes. Navigate on Autopilot is geofenced, but provided you have a destination set in your nav and you've pressed the Navigate on Autopilot button on your screen, it will activate and deactivate as it transitions into and out of the areas that it is allowed to function. Navigate on Autopilot is really the first time that Tesla has tried fusing the navigation system and the autopilot systems. This fusion will allow for a significant expansion of Enhanced Autopilot's functionality. One example of this expanded functionality is that the system now knows which highway exit you need to take and when it is approaching. So as you approach your exit, it will automatically turn on your turn signal, take the exit, and then a message will display on your screen letting you know that Navigate on Autopilot will disengage in 600 feet, 500 feet, 400 feet, etc., and then it disengages with a chime. Once Navigate on Autopilot disengages, it drops the car back into regular Autopilot mode, at which point you, the driver, need to take over because you're on an off-ramp and regular Enhanced Autopilot is not presently able to navigate on surface streets, so it can't read stop signs, it doesn't identify stoplights, it can't negotiate complex intersections, so you, you really just have to shut it off and take over. Beyond just knowing what exit you need to take, the system also knows what lane you need to be in to take said exit, and it will make a suggestion that you change lanes into that lane as you approach the exit. To confirm the lane change suggestion, if you're in a Model 3, you can either press down on the drive mode selector stock, which is the one on the right, or you can indicate using the appropriate turn signal. The car will then initiate an auto lane change and will shut the turn signal off once it has completed the lane change. Autopilot in cars with hardware 2 or better is now using the side cameras to help gauge whether a lane change maneuver is safe. However, the ultimate responsibility to determine lane change safety still depends upon you, the driver. I tried out the automatic off-ramp functionality on quite a few different off-ramps across the South Bay, so this is all done up in the San Francisco Bay Area, and the system worked very, very well, but it helps that most of the off-ramps are fairly simple. So I decided to step up the difficulty a bit and try some simple highway interchanges. First up is California 17 South to California 85 North. So here the car suggests a lane change to get into the appropriate lane. I go ahead and accept the lane change request and it moves over. This interchange is an easy sweeping interchange that you can take at kind of ridiculous speed if you want to. And the only complex thing about it is that it does take a single lane and split it into two. And the system has a little trouble with that. It kind of will wobble a little left and a little right before figuring out where it wants to put itself. Um, it doesn't appear significant on screen, but you, you feel it when you're driving and it's um, a little concerning. You can see the car was very cautious through the interchange, slowing to well below the set speed. In case you're wondering why I'm holding the steering wheel so strangely, I'm sort of hovering my hands around the wheel while touching the back of the wheel with my fingers. I decided upon this compromise because usually I keep my hands on the wheel, but I know that when filming demonstrations, um, a normal grip on the wheel makes it difficult for people to visualize what the system is doing, and so I figured this would be a decent compromise. Keeping your hands on the wheel really does help with processing exactly what the car is doing from an operator standpoint. Anyway, there's a merge due to the right lane disappearing shortly after the interchange, and I can't be totally sure how well Autopilot actually handled the situation because there were no cars to my left during the merge. Autopilot simply stayed in the right lane until it ended, and then transitioned over without signaling. Here, however, the system identified and slowed down for another car merging onto the highway. And that's kind of impressive, because previous builds of Autopilot, and especially Hardware 1 Autopilot, did horribly when it came to cars merging into your lane. It didn't really respond to it until the vehicle was fully in your lane, at which point you'd already closed a lot of distance. 
Next up is the 280 to 17 South interchange. It is another one of those long sweeping interchanges similar to the 17 South to 85 North interchange that you just saw. But this interchange doesn't have the lane split that the other one did, so generally autopilot handles it a lot better. And stop littering, Volkswagen. Anyway, as before, the car signals, moves off to the right, and then follows the uh, interchange. Significantly reducing speed yet again. It, it's very, very cautious through these interchanges, uh, dropping down to about 48 miles an hour and then slowly speeding back up again uh, once it uh, starts merging back into traffic. Here's where we start running into some of the limitations of the current software. Like last time, Autopilot merges one lane to the left because the lane the car is currently in ends, and it does so by waiting until the right lane ends and it does not signal during the process. However, unlike last time, the two right lanes are about to turn into exit-only lanes, and so the car needs to move over two lanes to stay on the highway. Here you can see that Autopilot suggests a lane change to start moving out of the two right lanes, but it identifies a vehicle off the rear quarter panel of the car. And in doing so, the left lane line in the Autopilot display turns red, indicating that the lane change maneuver is not safe and will not initiate yet. Mercifully, the person moved over, and that allowed my car to move over. Though that put us into that same situation yet again. It suggests a lane change, the same car is at the rear quarter panel, and the lane change isn't safe. However, here, because I'm rapidly approaching the exit, the car begins slowing down even more, I'm guessing in hopes to open up space so that it can move over. And then it successfully completes the lane change. Now, I've capped the maximum speed at 65 miles an hour for the sake of this video, which is kind of putting it into hard mode when it comes to moving around in traffic in the Bay Area, since pretty much everyone speeds significantly. One of my criticisms of the system as is, is it waits far too long to suggest lane changes to either get into or out of exit lanes, especially if you're in a very traffic-dense area like, say, Los Angeles, where you really have to pre-plan everything that you're doing. Some of the lane change suggestions when it comes to moving into a faster lane are also a little silly. Here, for example, Autopilot suggests that I move into the right lane because it is a faster moving lane. However, that right lane becomes an exit only lane, and so I ignore its suggestion. Since the simple highway interchange experiments seem to have gone reasonably well, aside from some lane split issues, I decided to take things a step further and try some looping interchanges. First up, California 17 North to 280 towards Saratoga. You can see the car turns on its turn signal, moves into the right lane, and then just leaves the turn signal on and takes the exit. As we approach the exit, it starts slowing down significantly, down to 32, 31, 30. It actually drops down to, what, about 23 miles an hour or so. And I know the sign says 25, but you normally take this at somewhere around 35 or 40. 20, oh my god, it's gonna do this at 20. Someone is going to rerend me. <laughs> Despite being very timid and slow, it seemed to negotiate it pretty well, though I had to shut the system off uh, before merging back in. Well, because of the CHP. Okay, need to shut it off. We have... Apparently someone had dropped a, an extending aluminum ladder on the road and cars were running it over, so the CHP was swerving around to slow traffic to buy them time to remove the ladder from the freeway. Taking things even further, I decided to try the 85 South to 17 North interchange, which is another looping interchange, but after the loop, you have to negotiate a short distance lane change to be able to get onto 17 North. If you fail to negotiate this lane change, then you'll end up on another looping interchange that will take you onto 85 North. I didn't really expect this to work given how timid Autopilot is when it comes to lane changing, but I figured why not give it a shot? So here we are approaching the exit, the car puts on its turn signal and takes the exit while staying in the appropriate lane for the exit, and for some reason turns on the opposite turn signal, I guess to indicate that it's staying left, but I'm sure that would just confuse the heck out of the people behind me. Approaching the loop, the car begins to slow significantly. Now this loop you can usually take at like 40, 50 plus if you're used to driving it. Um, here the car slows down to 24. The people behind me were both perplexed and um, probably rather frustrated. 30, 20, oh dear lord. Oh god. People are going to be so mad behind me. The car is fairly stable through the turn, although, like I said, slow. Up ahead, you can see the cars that you have to merge with uh, in the short distance lane change. Somewhat perplexingly, the car turned on the turn signal at the top of the loop without asking for any kind of lane change confirmation. And then 
asks for lane change confirmation, which I provide, and it doesn't really even attempt to change lanes. In case you couldn't read it, the error that appeared on the screen with that one was uh, high curvature detected, navigate on autopilot limited. So autopilot saw the curved interchange that it was approaching, that it would have to take if it failed that lane change. And I'm not sure if seeing the road curving away and disappearing caused it to abort the lane change or what, but I had to take over and manually change lanes myself. Not having any real expectation that the car would be able to complete this interchange, uh, I decided to try again because why not? On the second attempt, again, the car moved over, signaled, and also signaled to the left, strangely. Autopilot slowed significantly, entering the loop just like last time. Again, the car was fairly stable through the loop with a little bit of wandering in the lane. Just as a reminder, in case this video didn't make it obvious enough, autopilot in its present form does not make your car an autonomous car. So don't treat it like one, okay? It's doing all right. Now we have the hard part. This time that rogue left turn signal did not come on at the peak of the turn, although that same error popped up. It asked to confirm the lane change. I tell it to confirm the lane change. It started moving over, got about a quarter of the way across the line, and then started veering to the right again. It was giving up. So I had to manually intervene and complete the lane change. Regardless of whether or not you feel that the current implementation of Navigate on Autopilot is all that great, it's very clearly the first step on a long road toward higher levels of automation. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Assuming that you've received the update, let me know in the comments below what your experiences with Navigate on Autopilot have been like. And as always, don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you later.